Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. Providence House Domestic Violence Services of Catholic Charities is one of the oldest and most comprehensive domestic violence providers in the state of New Jersey. It's accredited through the National Council on Accreditation. In Burlington County, PHDVS has been offering services for more than 30 years and for more than 25 in Ocean County. Providence House Domestic Violence Services assists victims of domestic abuse and their children with an array of services that include emergency shelter, a 24-hour hotline, counseling services, a comprehensive children's program, a parenting support group, and a program specifically designed to assist, the, to assist victims aged 50 and older. These services are offered at no cost to individuals and are invaluable to victims and their children who are struggling to break free from the cycle of violence in their homes. My guests today are going to talk about some of the newer services that Providence House is offering. They are alternative therapies. Joining me today is the Associate Director of Providence House, Mary Petro. Mary, bless you. Welcome oh, to the Catholic thank you Corner. For me, Mary has been with Providence House for 20 years. She oversees programs in both Burlington and Ocean counties. Mary's responsible for the overall operations and direct services offered by Providence House, which includes two 24 hour crisis hotlines, safe houses, comprehensive outreach counseling programs, and PALS. Peace, a learned solution, which is creative arts therapy for children impacted by domestic violence. Mary is a New Jersey certified social worker and a former New Jersey probation officer certified in the New Jersey Address Confidentiality Program. Mary's also, and maybe just as important, mm -hmm. a great parishioner of St. Aloysius in Jackson, New Jersey. Chrissy Giuliano. Chrissy, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Chrissy is a licensed social worker and a registered yoga teacher. Oh boy, <laughs> are we going to have fun? <laughs> she is a trauma sensitive yoga candidate through the Trauma Center at Brookline, Massachusetts. Chrissy works with children, adolescents, and adults at the Center for Counseling and Education in Malton, New Jersey, on a variety of issues related to grief and loss anxiety, trauma, and attachment. Recognizing that traumatized individuals often have difficulty being present in their bodies, she uses yoga as a bridge to build a sense of awareness and self-acceptance. Chrissy's mission is to help individuals to become not only aware of their physical bodies, but to begin to facilitate a sense of safety and acceptance within the body. Boy. Her volunteer work at Providence House, leading yoga classes for women and their children, continues to be her heart's work and what she calls a great blessing in her life. You're a great blessing to us too, Chrissy. Cheryl Pliskin of Mount Laurel and her dog, Henry, <laughs> make regular visits to Providence House to offer pet therapy for residents and their children. Cheryl is a former social worker with foster care youth and currently owns her own corporate gift basket company. Henry, a registered <laughs> therapy dog who's so excited to be with us, <laughs> is Cheryl's first foster rescue. He's two and a half years old. Henry and Cheryl volunteer at many other places like the Woman's Shelter, Moorestown Library, Lourdes Hospital Mental Health Units, Operation Yellow Ribbon Mascot, and Community Treatment Solutions, with youth in group homes and victims of human trafficking. Henry has won a fundraising contest for Big Fluffy Dog Rescue that earned a photo on bottles of Cabernet for a year. He was in a Marlton newspaper marching alongside veterans in a July 4th parade. Wow, Henry. Warm, Bless yeah. you. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. What a great, great gift. Henry is also one of the original dogs in the Tri-State Canine Crisis Response Team. After police, fire, paramedics secure a crisis, 
emergency or disaster situation, dog handler teams go in behind them to offer comfort to the victims, survivors, and of course, the first responders. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much, boy, oh boy. <laughs> what a program we're going to have. <laughs> Mary, why don't you kind of start it off, okay? Sure. How about telling us a little bit more about Providence House? I, I know it's a great, great uh, gift to, to not only our diocese, but you know, to, to people. Maybe you can tell me about the, the, the families, how you help them. Sure. How it all goes. Sure. Well, Providence House being the domestic violence program of Catholic Charities, what we do is we <coughs> offer options to people who are experiencing violence in the home or grew up in a violent home and now are concerned about their own ability to carry forward the next generation of mm -hmm. families. Um, so uh, the crisis hotline is available 24 hours a day and that's, um, that's available to anyone. That could be a neighbor who's concerned about somebody. Maybe they're not sure what they could say to somebody that they suspect is a victim of violence or a guidance counselor who maybe suspects there's something with a child in their classroom and they're not sure how to handle it. So the 24 hour hotline is available to them, but we also offer for um, our safe house, which is for people who are in imminent danger, those who are um, really fleeing from the violence in their homes. And that's where these two wonderful women um, come to offer their services. And we have comprehensive services. We serve over 2,000 people per county per year who don't stay in our safe houses, people who come to us who either are still in that violent relationship or maybe have broken free from it. I just want to talk about their options, maybe come up with some safety planning for themselves and their children. Um, what we do is we don't tell anyone what they need to do. We provide them with information and education. We tell them about all the options that are available to them, and then we help them as they walk down that path. Wow. I guess my first thought was uh, like the hotlines and mm -hmm. 24 hours. Yes. Uh, how does that information get out? How, how would somebody, say somebody's in a, a situation mm -hmm. and they, they say, I, I got to talk to somebody. Right. How would, uh, can you just dial? Yes, you can dial the number. There's a uh, statewide hotline number that will okay. link you to your specific county. Um, but also if you dial, uh, if you call 211, if your local contact information. Um, and also the local police departments have the information about the, how to contact the hotlines as well. And so, as does Catholic Charities websites. So 211 is a very important number as other numbers. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. you, you don't hear that as often as, as the other numbers. Mm -hmm. That's yes, mm -hmm. it's terrific. an informational one. What are some of the uh, different kind of therapies that you offer? Well, with our PALS program, that's for children who either are victims of violence or have witnessed violence in their home. We offer music therapy, play therapy, art therapy, dance movement therapy, um, and that's to help children ages 3 to 12 and then, of course, from 13 to 18 help express how they're feeling. A three-year-old has a very difficult time articulating what they've seen or what they have felt, but that anger might be there, that anxiety might be there. So we use those therapies to um, help them move because oftentimes they're in the clinical ranges for depression and anxiety. So we help them move through those emotions and heal from the trauma that they've experienced. How would that work a little bit? Like, I mean, so so you have them dance or express? I yeah. Mean, do you just uh, have them go dance and, no. and, and they, <laughs> but, but they dance it like, you know, you They, they can, you know, um, but, you know, movement therapy is interesting because sometimes children don't react to dance. They'll react to um, being able to throw a ball back and forth or different kinds of movements, being in control of their bodies. What we do is we let them choose which modality they prefer. Um, so maybe a teenage girl has always liked music um, but doesn't like to draw or a young man comes to us and um, he doesn't want to dance around, but he'll play with the ball. And at first he's throwing the ball very aggressively at the therapist. And then we move mm -hmm. towards what those levels of, you know, what are you angry about? And, and all during the course of that, we can certainly talk to them about what they're feeling, what they're seeing, and help them heal from that. Well, that's, that's is, is there any correlation, like if someone chooses uh, music vis-a-vis -a, -vis a, a ball? Mm -hmm. I mean, like you, you professional therapist. I mean, can you make a draw a line between the two and say, okay, uh, the person who throws the ball and the person who dances is going to show us some, give us some indication of whatever. No, it's as individual's personalities. Okay. It really is. It's about creativity, levels of comfort. Some um, some people are not as comfortable, to, but we have noticed that um, children who are allowed to choose. Um, who maybe won't talk it out. Like a very young child took one of our play therapy trays and put what she viewed as good people on one side of the sand tray and bad people on the other side, and in the center put a figure of a policeman. There was all kinds of things in there, monsters and you know birds and squirrels and just a variety of animals. And she put the policeman in the center. And so we, you know, why is the policeman in the center? Because he protects us. He's trying to keep the bad people away. And and so for a three-year-old, that gave them. And then what's this? And why? did you put this here and then who got buried 
she buried someone in the sand. Mm. Who's buried in the sand? You know, so it provides us with an avenue to have those conversations, which if you sat across from a desk with a three-year-old, they would not tell you who they're mm. afraid of and who they're burying. You know, this is probably, I don't want to get off the subject, but this is so, but I've always thought as a priest, mm -hmm. you know, I, not, not just so much with the violent part, but even when there's uh, a tragedy or death or something, and you say to a child, you know, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, Right. You know that they're not, but you know, to, right. to, to try to get that, that, that feeling out of them, that's why I, I, I salute you all for doing, doing what you're doing. Uh, Alternative therapy. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of what you're talking about, or is that, yeah, that no, something that's else? Yeah, no, that's our structured therapy program, okay. and um, that's because people who grew up in violent homes, that's their normal. They don't necessarily recognize that the violence isn't normal. That's what they grew up in. That's what they perpetuate forward. And, and domestic violence homes are generationally, it goes from generation to generation to generation. So we're constantly trying to educate to break the cycle. So that's our formal approach. What we have the pleasure of doing, because we have wonderful volunteers, is bringing some other options um, to help specifically the the people in our safe house who are in crisis, imminent danger and in crisis, and to help them have a sense of nurturing and safety so that they can make informed decisions. Um, many suffer from flashbacks of the violence. Many are lay awake at night fearful that someone's going to find them and harm them. And so we try to take a very holistic approach. We can't afford to have all that staff, but we have such valuable and talented volunteers that we're able to offer other things like yoga and pet therapy. Wow. Now, the, are safe houses uh, protected somehow or other? Yes. I mean, so that they, they, they're safe. Yes, they're non disclosed um, and they do have safety precaution measures that protect Super. them. Super. Wow, Mary. Mm -hmm. All of that, and you just, you just throw it off like, you know, just every, every day <laughs> and it's, smile. And, it's uh, my passion. Oh I, I, my you know, God. You my can tell. You yeah, can tell. I, you know, I don't think children should have to recover uh, from their childhood. And so that's what drives me. Super. Oh, God bless you. And now we got some volunteers. Yeah, some <laughs> tell, wonderful volunteers. Tell me, uh, Christy and Cheryl, what, what uh, allows you to volunteer in that way? There's something's got to be inside of you that says, well, you know, you could be doing something else. Well, for me, um, I first heard about Providence House when I was in graduate school. Uh -huh. And when I read their mission statement, it included some words that really resonated with me. And that was um, adv advocacy, education, and empowerment. And, you know, as a clinician, as a mom, as someone who is striving towards social justice in the world, I really believe in that. And so this really allows me the opportunity to you know, work with children and survivors of trauma. So it's very meaningful to me, this work. Oh my God, you're, you're a mom and a graduate student. I, I, I thought you were just still getting your degree or something. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> God bless you. you know, and and, and, and uh, Cheryl, uh, you also volunteer, but you got you got a big plate also of the things you do. Yeah, I do. I started my career with a master's working with abused foster children, uh -huh. and that was for quite a, a few years. And then I started my own business and got into dog rescue. And many, if not most, of our dogs have been abused, abandoned, neglected. So volunteering with abused, abandoned, neglected kids allows me to blend all of that together. The yeah. kids seem to be able to relate to Henry's story. Uh, they'll ask about him. He was given away. He was verbally abused. Yeah. So we get to talk about a lot of the things that happened to Henry, which is a safe way for them to talk about the things that have happened to them. See, that's so interesting. So your, your rescue dogs have been abused dogs? Many. Went, yeah. Well, many. Yep. Wow. And, and, you, and you, th you say that they can resonate, so to speak, with, isn't that interesting? It's a way? lot safer to talk about the dog's experience, even if we all know in the room that they're really talking about their own experience. So when Henry showed up one week with a Band-Aid on his leg mm -hmm. from a vet visit, there wasn't a child in the room that couldn't relate to the pain and the hurt and Joy. Was it an accident or was it on purpose? And who wow. hurt him and why? And mm -hmm. we talk about Henry. Yeah, we got follow-up questions from the children about Henry that week. They they kept checking in with us to see if Henry had healed and was he feeling better and could we check on it him? And is it yeah, that it was neat? it was really wonderful. That that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's just God's love implanted in all of us, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation, and and that mm -hmm. that can come out. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Oh wow! 
tell me a yoga. Yes. <laughs> Are we going to do a little practice? <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me a little bit, if you don't mind, Chrissy, about your yoga and you offer it to mothers and children. And, yes. And, uh, uh, is this different? I'm, I was going to say, is this different than regular yoga class? I don't even know what regular yoga <laughs> class is. Well, it is. And if somebody was looking in at the classes that I provide, um, they might see, see that the uh, language is a little bit different. It's more invitational. What we know about survivors of trauma is that they often don't feel safe going into their physical bodies. So this is a time where they are invited to go in and begin to feel sensations in their body that maybe have been kind of scary or unsettling in the past, but they're in a, a, an environment that's safe and they're supported and again, they're invited to do so. They're never forced into any kind of form or pose. Mm -hmm. Again, once they're in their body and once they're in a form, they're also invited to make choices within their body, which is something that a lot of times they're not provided with or they don't feel they've had an opportunity to make choices. So they might be you know, given the opportunity to leave their eyes open or closed, to leave their hands open or closed. It's always their choice. So that is uh, really unique to this kind of yoga. Also having the opportunity for children and their mothers to interact, it really goes to the foundation of attachment theory. So if you think of those early relationships that are forming and somebody with a happy face mirroring your actions, making it, making you know that you're a big deal, you're important, having that opportunity is just, it's just invaluable. So the mother and child mirror each other, is that what you're Well, they're about? together having their own interoceptive experience um, together in the room. So they're both feeling what they feel um, together. They're both smiling, they're happy to be there, um, and they're feeling supported and safe in this environment too. Tell me a little bit though, uh, Chrissy, when you said that sometimes they, 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 they have a hard time getting into their body. So yes. What does that, what do you mean by so that? So basically having, going in their body, they have learned that it's not safe always to feel what they're feeling in their bodies based on their experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to kind of disassociate and to not be present. So this is a, a practice in working towards going back in and being okay when you're feeling sensations in your body and also recognizing you can make choices within your own body. Now can anyone participate or, or do you have to be, you know, <laughs> strong? Absolutely. Or? We meet everybody exactly where they are. So. Individuals can sit if that's their choice. They can stand, they can sit on the floor, they can do whatever uh, works for them. We make accommodations or we, we work with everybody who we have in the room that's present. So everybody's encouraged to join in. And tell me a little bit about the, uh, I guess the children games, the friendly yes. games that uh, you, you also bring to this? Yeah, so as far as games and music, we use music from classical music to uh, the Beatles and the Beach Boys. So we use music that goes with whatever we're working on in that moment. Um, we, a lot of the games that we do um, encourage deep breathing where they don't realize they're learning these skills of deep breathing and regulation for their bodies. So we can do bubble blowing. And if you think about blowing a really big bubble, you need to take a deep breath in and slowly blow out. And if you make the motivation something like, let's see if we can blow an even bigger bubble this time they're more inclined to take that deeper breath and slow things down. So we use lots of techniques like that to just make it fun and really interactive. I'm gonna go home and buy some of that bubble <laughs> <laughs> There are days I could blow a big bubble. <laughs> or need to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have to go to class myself. Yes, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> Cheryl, you know, look at your buddy. <laughs> He's really He's happy. Trying to keep calm for you. <laughs> oh, bless him. So, so Henry's a registered therapy dog. Yes, he is. Wow. Tell me, when you first got Henry, he was just Henry. Henry and I met exactly a year ago yesterday. It was uh, our anniversary. Is that right? He was a, a rescue dog from the big fluffy dog rescue that I began as a foster, and I very quickly knew I was going to be what they affectionately call a foster fail. And that means when the foster parent adopts the dog. <laughs> so being corny, I adopted my black dog on Black Friday. <laughs> and he's been with me ever since. He's like this most of the time, except when we're wrestling with other dogs. He can certainly be perky and lively, but what he wants most in life is to be petted. So knowing that and mm -hmm. knowing he would probably make me crazy expecting me to pet him 24-7, therapy work just seemed like the very natural way for him to pay it forward after mm -hmm. I adopted him and me to be able to give back to the community. So we are a therapy team. 
Tell me though, Cheryl, how, uh, you said that he was a rescue dog. Yes. Uh, how did you get him? I mean, somebody did you was he on the street and somebody said there's a dog out here that nobody wants, or no. they call you up? Or how, how do you get the, a dog like this? It's a little like online dating. I had become aware of. I the have big no idea what that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm right, so I, I need to use an example that would resonate with the crowd. I know your audience. Okay, well, for the, the viewers, they will know what online dating is. Um, I had gotten familiar with the Big Fluffy Dog Rescue and just loved their mission and the way they work and the way they operate. So they post the dogs that need foster homes every week, and you go on and you see their pictures and you oh, read descriptions oh. and. I fell in love with his picture and I contacted them and said I'd like to apply to be a foster parent for Henry and I was approved and they load the dogs up out of Tennessee and they drive all the way up to Connecticut stop in periodically and you pick the stop you want to go to geographically and then you you meet your dog and you're a foster until they get adopted by you or by someone else oh, so I've now had oh seven my. dogs in my first year oh, wow. mm -hmm. So sometimes you just take the dog and, and, and give it some strength, et cetera, and then exactly. somebody else comes along and adopts the dog. Exactly. I've been a foster mom now, not counting Henry, to six other dogs, and the one that I have right now has an interested adopter, so we'll see how that goes, and then I get another one. I've never, I've never, heard, yeah. I've never heard of that before. Interesting. Oh, my gosh. Now, tell me, what do you and Henry do when you, <laughs> you go to Providence House? Henry does that a lot, <laughs> and I do this a lot. You're basically watching us in action. So if this were an action movie, everyone would be asleep. Henry's job is to go in and let the kids pet him. So much like you meet them where they are, so do we. Henry, however, has a little bit of a stubborn streak in sensing which person is reluctant to pet him. And he, in his own way doesn't take no for an answer. So if there are 17 people in the room and 16 have petted him, he will seek out the 17th person, convince them he's safe, convince them it's okay to pet him and touch him, and he generally does win them over. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Isn't that a, it's a, a beautiful thing, mm. a beautiful thing. What is it about Henry that draws people? Just his personality is? He is just an affectionate, warm aura, mm -hmm. and he senses who needs him. I think the most poignant moment since I started volunteering at Providence House was the week that we were there, and there was a mom who was off to the side, clearly fighting tears. Henry collapsed, <laughs> like he did here, and just stared at her, and she went over, and laid down on the floor with him and just petted him and he nudged her with his nose and they just had the most private healing moment mm -hmm. in a room full of people. It was it was awesome. So would I be correct in kind of saying it's just the naturalness of, of, uh, uh, of creation? I mean, the naturalness mm -hmm. of of what God gives us all his gifts that comes out from an animal and to us and us back to an animal, is that? He's non-judgmental. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't care if the yeah. person petting him is black, white, yeah. fat, yeah. skinny, old, young, yeah. right. Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't yeah. care. He just wants to be there to be petted and make people feel loved. Wow. What kind of responses uh, do you all have from uh, the residents and, uh, you know, regarding Chrissy and Cheryl's uh, volunteering and their, and their gifts that they bring? I know that the clients have certainly reported back to us that they have a new sense of calm, which I think is so, so important. When you're trying to heal and you feel like you're in crisis, you know, oftentimes victims of violence have been, they've been under assault. You know, they've been under assault by verbal attack, by physical attack, the unknowing of when the next uh, altercation could occur. Um, their pets have been injured by the abusive person and the perpetrator of violence has injured the family pet as part of the dynamics of having power and control over the family. And just to be in a safe place is great. To have the entire safe place feel nurturing 
is is just an added bonus and it's something that you can't always um, bring to a home where there's communal living um, because we, we house up to 27 individuals at a time so there's 27 people in those buildings in each of those buildings but um, after our volunteers have been there there's just a whole new sense of calm in the home of the of the safe house I'm a storyteller I'm a story listener mm -hmm. do you have a story you'd like to share about mm -hmm. no names but a person or something can you I don't have any individual stories. I feel like every time I leave, I'm just so inspired by the people that I've met. It, I'm so touched in a different way every time. And I feel like I float home from, from my visit. I really do. For me, it, I'm so grateful to be afforded this opportunity. Um, and each experience is so precious to me. What do people say they like most about what you do? I like watching the children who clearly have no control over much of what's going on in their lives being able to be in control when they're with Henry. So every time we're there, one of the children will get him water, one of the children will put water in his bowl, whether he wants a drink or not, <laughs> and one of the kids will feed him his dinner. So the fact that they're able to give back to him in a situation where they're really basically taking I think is empowering for them, and they do seem to enjoy it. You know what I'm thinking about, because I've, I've, I've said this, uh, I don't know how many times in my priesthood. The, the real key to me is that God wants us to understand that we can love and be loved. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing you saying, whether it's, it's the people that need a little therapy or the dogs or... You know, somehow or other, I think that's implanted in, in all of creation, mm -hmm. that, nest, that, that need to be able to love but be loved. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm hearing. Somehow it comes out maybe at the beginning, but, you know, mm -hmm. but see, certainly starts, it starts to come out. What kind of results have you seen? You know, um, we've uh, been doing this now for a little over a year with the, the ladies coming, and it just has really um, promoted a peaceful sense in the home and carried forth our message. We, we're trying to promote peace in all homes. Um, and so although someone, a survivor, might be with us for a short period of time, we've altered their path. You know, their path is now in a different direction. They're not going to grow up and be violent. They're not going to grow up and be victimized. Um, that's certainly the hope. And... I'm hoping they'll take this forward with them. They'll learn how to uh, to breathe, mm -hmm. and they'll learn how to be nurturing and kind, and that we'll all have a future generation of, of children and grandparents and parents and that wouldn't are Wouldn't this be wonderful all over the world? Mm -hmm. It would be. Oh it would gosh. be. But Don't quit. Don't here. quit. <laughs> <laughs> to reach out, uh, learn a little bit more, mm -hmm. try Facebook or Twitter at CC Trenton or Instagram at CC underscore Trenton. <laughs> Got it right. God bless. Keep up the, oh God, your smiles are so beautiful. Pray with us. Love and be loved. Thank good you, stuff. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Monsignor. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs>